In my job, I get to talk with people from all different types of industries, from the individual contributor up to the CEO, from high tech companies to low tech to education to healthcare, government. And we talk about the challenges of teams working together across distance and time. And I've realized through all of those conversations that that is the biggest challenge facing us in marching toward the economies of the future. We have to coordinate what we're doing together and share information in a meaningful way. So tonight, I'm really excited to share with you what I've learned about solving this problem. And let's go on a little journey. This is Julia. Julia works at a high-tech company right here in Boston. Now, from the outside, she could be a financial analyst, a software engineering manager, or a supply chain director. But she's actually a project manager. She's running three major projects at her company. She's a little bit under the gun because her boss just said, I need a status report on those three major projects. But if you look at her now, she's like, I am focused, I got everything in front of me, and I am really organized. In actuality, she feels fragmented, overwhelmed, and a bit stressed out because she has to gather information from 14 different apps. She's logging in and out of them to gather the information. And then they have three company-wide big monolithic systems she's got to log in and out of to gather some more information. She's got to look at email threads, instant message chat streams, and log in and out of several shared folders to get this information, and a lot of it is conflicting. But she's gonna pull it all together in a spreadsheet, she's gonna write some formulas to summarize and analyze the data, then she's gonna take that preliminary report and post it to another shared drive to solicit comments from her team before she submits it to the boss. Julia's been app hopping all day. I mean, how many of us have faced this same feeling where your data and app overwhelmed. And by the end of the week, this computer that is supposed to make our lives better, we just wanna scream at it. I mean, what the heck is going on? We have more information and more apps and more data available to us at any point in our history, and we feel more out of control than ever. And it's not likely to get any better. We got cloud computing, we got Big data, whatever the heck that means. Big data analytics and the internet of things, which really scares the heck out of me in terms of how much information is gonna come toward us. It's like we've just discovered indoor plumbing and we're trying to push as much water through those pipes and it's just creating a flood in our minds. We are fascinated with technology. We're thinking more is better, more data, more processing power, and we're getting the opposite effect. 30%. That is how much time the average information worker spends doing three things. According to McKinsey and Company, we spend 30% of our time on doing three things. The first, we're searching for the latest version of a document or a file. It might be a statement of work, a contract, a purchase order, a bill of materials, or the latest record for a patient. The second thing we're doing is we're trying to coordinate what we're doing with the rest of the team that is not likely in the same place or even the same time zone. We're instant messaging. What are you doing? I'm doing this. We're sending emails. And sometimes we have a system to keep track of it where we'll We'll do the work, and then we're gonna tell the system that we did the work to try and communicate it so somebody can write a report. And the third thing we're wasting time doing is we're reporting on what we're doing. We're doing those spreadsheets to communicate status, or we're going to a status meeting, and by the time the report is submitted, we're talking about the past. If our business was a car, this is like driving your business down the road forward, only looking backwards at a spreadsheet at where we have been and hoping that it's gonna work out okay. 
$24,000 per employee per year. That's the cost of this chaos. If you have 100 people in your company, you say, yeah, that can't be too bad. $2.4 million is being wasted, and this is real money. If you just hired 100 people, you really only hired 70 because the other 30 are spending their time searching, coordinating, and reporting. And the cost to the US economy every year is $1.47 trillion of lost productivity. Those are big numbers. So let's look at healthcare. That touches all our lives. Have you ever had to deal with a medical billing error? Have you ever had to pull together the medical records for a loved one or coordinate their care across different doctors, different healthcare facilities? Have you ever tried to integrate your own medical records? I've had my own encounter with the healthcare industry and God bless them, my beautiful beating heart, I am overjoyed to be here. But I can tell you that they, every single day, struggle with getting the latest information on a patient and try and coordinate what they're doing with other doctors that you might be seeing. The cost is $700 billion a year, according to the American Medical Association. And the really sad part, this lack of coordination causes overtreatment and medical errors and 100,000 people lose their life. This problem is not just measured in dollars, but in lives. So we're fascinated, we're trying to solve this problem. We say, oh, well, the first wave of trying to solve this problem, we say, let's just share information. So we have Dropbox, Google Docs, SharePoint. Oh my gosh, and we got shared drives, and I can tell a lot of people have had this experience. Let's just share the information, or let's just put it in the cloud where people can take their own sip. And as soon as we put it there, we realize this thing called version control. We don't know if we have the latest version of what's posted out there. And we're still struggling to try and answer the question, who's got the latest version of that thing? What are they doing with it? When are they gonna be done? And what's gonna happen next? We're trying to coordinate what we're doing kind of like a symphony orchestra, but all of the musicians are in different places. Let me ask you a question to start to reveal this, the solution to this problem. How the heck does that GPS in your pocket know what time you're going to arrive within a minute? Actually, this is the most fascinating technology to me because as a physicist, I think, do you real? I, I tell my kids, do you realize this thing is communicating with four different satellites 1,200 miles away and it knows where I am? But before I reveal, reveal the answer of how we're going to solve this problem, let me tell you about Stephen A. Stanton, he's a best-selling New York Times author. He lives right here in Boston. He and I have become friends. But in his latest book, titled Smart Work, subtitled, Why Organizations Full of Really Intelligent People Do Really Dumb Things, and What You Can Do About It, in his book, he tells the story of a CEO of a Fortune 100 company, which was one of his clients. And the CEO was concerned about their inability to staff projects effectively and the low project success rate. The CEO asked a simple question to the management team. How many projects are active in our organization right now? Nobody knew. <laughs> Nobody knew. So they dispatched a senior manager and said, your job is to find out how many we've got. It took a month to find out how many projects and secret projects they had in flight in the organization. And the first thing they found out was that 700 of them were redundant. Nice. This company had several big monolithic systems, hundreds and like 700 apps, shared folders everywhere, and an army of highly skilled project managers running around and updating project plans and spreadsheets. And this company was out of control. And that's normal in business today. It's normal. What the heck? So back to that GPS in your pocket. How does it know when you're going to arrive at grandma's house? To the minute. 
The answer is, it knows what path you're on. And it knows what you're gonna do at every step along the path. All right, what the heck is a path? Well, actually, first let me tell you there's two things that we need to do to get to the economies of the future, and it relates to the path. The first thing we have to know is what actions we the humans do at each step along that path. You know, when I started, a, this is my seventh company, and I thought when I started this, co this software company, I was so enamored with this technology, I wanted to tell everybody how great it was. And I realized I was not in the technology business because when you strip away all of the functionality, the only thing that my company was trying to do was make it easier for humans to connect and work together when they're separated by time and distance. So the first thing we needed to know was, what actions are people performing? The second thing, we just needed to know what information our brothers and sisters needed to just do their job at each step along the path. That's all we needed to do. All right, what the heck is a path? In a business context, what the heck is Michael talking about? It's nothing more than a sequence of steps. And at each step, somebody does something. Now, we're talking about the digital age that we live in right now, but when I look at this, I say, you know, that kind of looks like an assembly line around the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. And what did we have? People were all in the same place. And the physical, like an automobile, was moving down the line. And man, did we crank out automobiles, airplanes, computers. We were moving something physical. But we forgot those lessons when we're moving something invisible, which is information. I gave you a couple of examples. This could be the flow of a purchase order or a statement of work, or onboarding a new employee, but they were represented digitally as they moved through the organization. So a path is nothing more than a series of simple steps, and people do things. People do things, we do things. And this is literally the backbone of the organization. This is what holds organizations together. Because if we don't have a path that this information is on. Our information is out floating there in an app or on a shared drive and everything falls apart and we don't know what's going on. The organization is a bit out of control. Let me give you an example to bring this home. $80 billion organization, they have 100 different business units. They wanted to reduce the cost of purchasing supplies and services from their network of vendors. So had they taken the current traditional approach, they would have solicited functional specifications across the whole company. They would have come up with a, several hundred to a thousand functional requirements, and they would have sent out a request for proposal to all of the appropriate vendors, and in the end, the selection committee, in their, in their wisdom, would have selected the big dog vendor that only builds purchasing systems for that industry. And each one of those business units who had evolved to optimize the way that they did purchasing, they had optimized their own path. They would all have to conform to the vendor's internal workflow. And there would be three years of disruption to implement the system and nearly $500 million of cost. Thank God they didn't take this approach. They had a little courage. They took they thought about the problem differently. They said, what are we really trying to do? We're really trying to coordinate what people do across the path of purchasing something. So what they did is they solicited, they went to each one of the business units and said, just make a path. Just tell us what the path is, how your organization does purchasing. And then along that path, Let's look at the information that people need, and maybe they need an app to process the information, but let's start with the path. And the net result was they saved $3 billion the first year, and there was almost no disruption in any of the business units. So this is the power of how we think differently about the problem, because the problem is not 
oh, I have another app for that, or to seek salvation in more data, because it's not gonna be there. The salvation is in us, in how we work together, and how we think about the problem. Because our imagination is the most creative and most powerful thing on the planet. Let's just use it wisely. Thank you.